Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. And you're probably wondering why we're looking at the side of a big red motor because he, well, uh, most of the time this week has been spent uh, and the, the past weekend either at the motorbike rally because we went to the Grubbs rally and it was excellent or doing a bit of um, emergency repairs and nursing and TLC on this baby because I got to work on Thursday and there was a few drops of oil underneath the bike oh dear so on closer inspection it was all coming from the oil filter which is right up underneath there older guzzies the oil filter is inside the sump and you have to take the sump off to change the filter and it's a bit of a ball ache but the newer guzzies there is a sort of a hole in the sump and the oil filter goes up in that hole and the oil was coming out of the filter so i managed with the judicious use of my old socks to um stem the, the bleeding enough just to ride gingerly home having made sure there was enough oil in um and now I've got the tool borrowed off a mate. I'm going to drop the filter out and see if everything is okay. But it does limit the amount of time I've had to spend on the chopper. So, uh, not an awful lot to update you on the, the big chop. But there are a few things that we have done. So, one of the things that we did was to have a think about how we're going to start it in a bit more detail. We have this really rough put together kickstart lever, which is on a ratchet. Um, and we've just been proof of concept. Can we get enough speed on the kick to uh, energize the electronic ignition? Because we need to have about 120 RPM on the crank in order for the, the sensor to detect the magnet going past and fire the coil. So we've had the coils out and we've been trying to kick the bike over. There isn't much chance of doing it just by kicking it but if we energize the dynastart at the same time as kicking the bike it does go over the top and i can't i can't show you on a video because it's really tricky to hold this on the frame and kick the bike and energize the dynastarter all at precisely the right time and film it it's virtually impossible but trust me there is a nice big fat spark on both of the plugs when we kick the bike over. Now, um, that would appear to be great news. So we've marked it here for um, when we've got top dead center. There's the red mark for top dead center. There's where the um, Conrod is, I suppose. So when these two line up, we are at top dead center and we're probably about on compression at the moment. Yeah, there's compression. So we bring it up to about there and then we give it an almighty kick and at the same time energize the dynastart. Now the old switch we had was simply a battery isolator switch that if you press the end of it in with, a, with an old uh, bolt, it would energize the starter and you see that on a few of the videos. It's a two person job, one person just to, to directly short the um, battery isolator and get that running well that that's obviously not a long-term solution so what we've done is we're, we're now using this little micro switch here just as a temporary measure uh, and we fitted a solenoid so that i'm pressing that um button there we can energize the starter so when i kick the bike and i press the button all at the same time it does go over the top um, i'm not quite sure you'll be able to see this but here we go yeah, no problem at all. So that's gone all the way over the top. Um, what, what we do get, we get a nice big fat spark when the uh, ignition is energized, but we've absolutely got zero out of the engine itself. So when we've tried to put some fuel back in, turn the fuel on from, from the, um, the bottle at the top up there, uh, give it a few pumps with the accelerator pump to, to prime it and, uh, and tickle the carb on the other side. We've got absolutely zero from the engine. And what I think might be happening, it's really hard to tell, but what I think might be happening is when we kick the bike over, we don't have enough speed coming up on compression to fire the ignition as it goes over the top. But after it's gone over the top and then we, we continue to kick down on the power cycle with the dynastart engaged, the piston comes back up again at the top of the exhaust cycle with enough rotational speed that the wasted spark happens and we fire the spark plug here. And because it all happens rather fast, not quite sure if the big fat sparks that we're seeing are the sparks that happen on the second 
um, the second time the piston is at the top of the cylinder or if it's actually sparking on the way up. But either way, we, we've got not a fart, not a pop at all out of the engine. So um, we, we're probably gonna have to figure out a different way of doing things. And there's a few options, quite a few things I've been looking at, inertia starters, other starter motors, um, perhaps a contact breaker set on the other side. Bob is convinced, absolutely convinced, that a contact breaker set is the answer. And we've already worked out how to do that and fit the contact breaker set onto the end of here. The, uh, my only reservation about that is that this is really neat and tidy and it doesn't look so good having a, a contact breaker set in, in kind of a bit of pressed steel on the outside and there'll be more wires and it looks a bit of a mess and the whole thing is, is all about the aesthetics as much as anything else. So the jury's out on that, but there won't be an awful lot of time to do much more to it because I have to get my big red motor guzzy working so I can use it next weekend to go to the Pilgrim Rally. So there's quite a few rallies on at the moment, quite a few weekends away, so there's a lot less going on in the garage. However, one of the auto jumbles at Stanford Hall was this weekend, and we did manage to pick up another gear set. Um, there, there are two different gears that we're using for this gearbox. At the moment, one of them has got four... Um, four teeth on the dog and the other one's only got three so it's a bit of a sloppier fit bob's managed to locate another gear with four dogs on uh, but we, we're not sure it actually fits on the spline because it's very tight on the original um the original commando gearbox shaft this is the shaft that we've made ourselves so bob's taken the shaft out of the center that's why the clutch is on the, the side there and he's going to investigate that so there is a few things uh, sorry there are where's my english there are a few things going on um but at a slower pace than usual because well we're trying to enjoy what little bit of summer we are getting this year and there we go and the final thing that's of course slowed progress a bit which is absolutely fine with me my eldest is 13 today so we're doing a lot of birthday things this weekend as well so that's where we're at as usual thank you for watching more updates will follow